Frank and Stella were blessed with two daughters while in New Zealand, Ivy and Roxy. In 1908, S. Stella, who they called Stella, arrived after they'd settled into Hobart. Having given up all hope of ever having a son in 1914, they were thrilled to welcome into the world Frank. FWB would write, We had to wait nearly 20 years for a boy. I myself had long abandoned all thought of such a possibility. My wife, on the contrary, never for a moment wavered in her confidence that he would arrive in due course. He arrived just before the outbreak of war in 1914. But family life for FWB and Stella came at a high price. Stella had nearly died after the birth of each of their first two children. Then their third daughter, Stella, was born with a mental disability. Added to this were two dramatic events. The first was when she contracted meningitis, leaving her with an even greater handicap. FWB wrote, Stella, the only fragile flower in our garden, we, we saw from the first that, as long as she lived, Stella would always have to be coddled and cosseted, the object of constant solitude, to be watched night and day, treated with unceasing tenderness and guarded from every wind that blows. To make matters worse, our frail little baby sustained during the first year of her life a terrible fall a fall that led to a severe attack of meningitis, followed by a long and trying illness. The second happened outside the Hobart Baptist Tabernacle, when she was just five years old. If I were asked as to the most nerve-shattering moment that I've ever known, my mind would go back to a certain Sunday morning at Hobart. The service over, I noticed on emerging from the church that Stella, then about five, was standing at the man's gate opposite. Catching sight of me, she forgot all about the traffic on the busy street between us and dashed towards me. As soon as she left the pavement on her own side of the road, I saw that nothing could save her. She stepped right into the path of an oncoming car, which, striking her on the fall, hurled her, a huddled heap, into the middle of the roadway. With a horror that I cannot attempt to describe, I hurried across to gather her up, only to find that, miraculous as it may seem, she was quite unhurt. 